And that next uh, recipient will be uh, Ms. Ruby D. Coming directly to the podium then. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> fellow awardees, officers, members of the Zora Neale Hurston Festival Award, etc. As you see, I'm loaded with honors <laughs> beyond my capacity to carry them. Anticipating such an event, I asked my old friend to come and accept for Ruby her part of this award. My old friend, Trent Lott. <laughs> and, uh, Trent. Trent was uh, busy. <laughs> He's working on his next tribute to Uncle Strom <laughs> for next year. And he wants to be sure this time to get it right. So I promised to send him a copy of Zora Neale Hurston's <laughs> of Mules and Men. <laughs> I, uh, speaking for Ruby, of course, and for my other private sponsors, including my mama, who's 105. <laughs> I am deeply honored that you honor me and my consort, Miss Ruby D with these awards. I am too modest to make a judgment as to whether or not I deserve them. <laughs> but you look to me as a collection of very wise people. <laughs> so, This occasion has such deep significance to us all. Zora Neale Hurston, here we are at this time and this place, waving proudly the flag that bears her name. And daring to remember all the many years ago when she was a forgotten fact of American culture and history, who dared to believe in herself and her people and to put on the record some of the things which identify us, our stories, our language, our habits, our culture. Think for a moment of what it was like when first we came to these shows all those many years ago and were deprived of our language, our name, our culture, our history, our heritage, it was even against the law to teach us to read and write in the English language that was given to us by means of communications. How did we survive? How did we maintain? 
It was because in spite of all that was done, in spite of the efforts to deny even our basic humanity, there were certain cultural habits we brought over from the mother country. And one of those habits was the sharing of our rich literary spoken heritage, the language of the storytellers. And so it was in the quarters where nobody could hear, when we were just among ourselves, we were able to regale ourselves and to remember our past, to establish our presence even in the kingdoms of hostility by being able to laugh at something we remembered from who we were a long time ago. And that's why Zora felt that these stories were so important. To her, they were not just jokes. They were not friendly anecdotes and incidents. They were the medium by which we maintained our essence. They were the substance of who we were. And she warned us that if we would forget them, we stood in danger of forgetting ourselves. I think she'd be happy tonight to know that we're here in honor of her and the stories to let her know that indeed we have not forgotten Zora. We will not forget what you meant to us, what you mean to us, what you will mean to us becomes more evident each day as we look around, as we examine our position, as we examine our culture, as we listen to what transpires for humor and television, and radio, and various other places, and we see our own children mistakenly believing that to refer to themselves as those who would have sex with their own mothers and that that would be the source of humor. Ah, Zora, we need you. We need your cleaning humor. We need your wild, raucous laughter to come again in the canyons of deceit and sweep away the smallness that threatens to smother us. And we promise, Zora, that one of these days, I don't know how we're going to do it, we're going to get you equal time on BET. <laughs> because we know that once the world and our children are exposed to the truth of what humor is supposed to do, all the rest will float away like chaff in the winds. Ah, Zora, you are our presiding spirit. You reminded us of Br'er Rabbit, and Nancy, High John the Conqueror, all of those wonderful evocations of the will to survive in spite of the absence of any possible thing that would make you survive, except that you were just determined not to be destroyed. We had to hang on, hang on by a fingernail, and that fingernail was our humor, our stories, the collection of memories, so when Zora came along and she saw them, she heard them, she said, ah, ah, they are not to be wasted. They're not to be thrown away. They must be gathered. They must be preserved. They must be put in a place of high honor so that always our children will know when it was asked, what were you? Were you a slave? Were you a darkie? Were you a nigger? Were you a reject? You would say, child, whatever they say of me, if you want the truth, look to the stories that Zora left us. There you will find who I truly was. And there you will find the model for what I want you to be. So thank you so much for preserving the heritage of this marvelous woman. Thank you and letting me be a part of it. Thank you.